So this is not the video I had planned for today, but this is breaking news. Showrunner Tony Gilroy ceases producing services on Andor Season 2. Now before we dive into it, I will say, good for Tony Gilroy for standing up for his principles and values, and basically saying no to Disney. Let's dive into it. Andor creator Tony Gilroy has told The Hollywood Reporter that he is no longer performing any non-writing duties for The Andor Show, the Disney Plus Star Wars series he created and runs. In a new statement, Gilroy responded to criticism he received from fellow Writers Guild members for performing services during the strike, but now he stopped those services and walked away from the show. The critique of the creator and executive producer came after it was reported on Friday that Gilroy, whose scripts were done for season 2, was still contributing to the producing process, and this was regarding casting and music-related duties. Gilroy now says he was not present on the show set, and he hasn't been since the strike began on May the 2nd. Here is the quote, I discontinued all writing and writing-related work on Andor prior to midnight May the 1st. After being briefed on the Saturday showrunner meeting, I informed the WGA I would also be ceasing all non-writing producing functions, and the Hollywood Reporter say, Lucasfilm declined to comment. One of those who originally criticised Tony Gilroy was Abdullah Saeed, whose credits include creating the Onyx Collective comedy Delhi Boys. In an Instagram post a couple of days ago, he described Gilroy as a scab, insisting Tony Gilroy stands with other writers, and now he's done that. On Friday afternoon, and I reported on this at the time, studios, including Disney, send letters to showrunners demanding they continue their work, in particular the non-writing contractually obligated services, amid the strike. The WGA called the studio's request union-busting tactics, something Gilroy says he was never part of. So he's now stepped away. So what does this mean for Andor? Well, honestly, no one knows. They might be insisting that production's going to continue with the other producers, but as the HR say, writing is never complete. Despite the fact Tony Gilroy says everything was done, the writing process never ends. It looks as though production might be halted altogether. Or if it continues, it's going to be without him. Is that good for the show? Things don't look too good on that front, but as I say, it's a good thing Gilroy is showing solidarity. But we do have some good news for the show. A few weeks ago, I reported that Andor Season 1 was being nominated for the prestigious Peabody Awards, and guess what? It won! An enormous win for Star Wars. They say the prestigious Peabody Award is rarely given for space opera and sci-fi. The organisation specifies on their website they honour excellence in storytelling that reflects the social issues of the day. And all season one did that spectacularly. I've said this before and I'll say it again, it's gonna age very well. As for Andor specifically, the Peabody Awards note, very few other long-running franchises loom as large in today's contemporary pop cultural imagination than Star Wars. They say with its many trilogies, spin-offs, and TV series, George Lucas's original creation back in 1977 can feel like a ubiquitous force as all-encompassing as its fictional and much-reviled empire. Yet amid stories of destiny-driven heroes and doomed superpowered villains, Tony Gilroy's Andor tackles that familiar galaxy with an eye not just for spectacle, but for a keen-eyed commitment to do what sci-fi and fantasy do best. Mirror our own mundane trials and tribulations back with enough remove that their lessons become unavoidable. And you know, it's nice they're acknowledging George Lucas, even though his vision is not part of these stories anymore, at a time where it feels like Disney's Star Wars to a large extent has deviated from his original vision. But a lot of fans feel as though Andor was the exception. And here's the most accurate bit, painting a portrait of how revolutions are built on their own recurring failure, of how hope can and needs to spring eternal in the face of authoritarianism run amok. Very relevant to our current day. So well deserved congratulations to everyone on that show. And this brings me on to our next subject. I saw a comment on a YouTube video reviewing the Andor show that really got me thinking, and I realised this is one of the best takes I've heard for the Andor show and why it's so good. For anonymity's sake, I'm not going to read the username, but this is what they said about the brilliance of the writing in Andor Season 1. The best thing Andor did, in my opinion, was to make the Empire a character. They gave the Empire an omnipresent weight that was felt everywhere they explored. And this hits the nail on the head. Whenever you have scenes with the Rebels, be it before Aldani when they were scheming, whether it's a Luthan's shop, whether it's Mon Mothma, whether it's Nemec's manifesto, or the people of Ferex rising up to revolt, Marva's speech, you feel the sense that the Empire is this horrible horrible demonic thing, which it really was, without showing us the face of the Empire itself, Emperor Palpatine, in a way by him not being there, and just seeing those lower down like in the ISB, the cogs in the machine, the Empire as this big, omnipresent being, was really felt. 
and its oppression was shown in clever and disturbing ways, for example using prisoners because they're cheaper than droids, electrocuting them, methods of torture, disregard of all human life, this was one of the best parts of the antagonism in the show. So while you do have fascists like Partagaz and Dedra Miro, Cyril Khan, these are not the true oppressor, the real oppressor is Palpatine in the shadows, and you felt that horrible overbearing presence in certain moments without him being there, so while some fans asked well why isn't Palpatine in the show, this is why he doesn't need to be. His propaganda, his brainwashing, his message, his fascism, his obsession with power and disregard for life is represented in different ways. You felt the Empire's thumb on innocence all the while that evil did not have a face, and in some ways that makes it even more horrifying because you know behind the scenes who's running the show. <laughs> but they never show that to you, just the power he holds and control he possesses on those who enact his will. In other Star Wars news, Tony Gilroy is adamant Rogue One does not have a director's cut, as you're aware the film had a troubled production history, but Gilroy is saying there were no alternate cuts. Now on my channel, if you've been watching for a long time, then you know I've covered multiple things that were not included in Rogue One, concepts from the original script, for example Jyn Erso surviving the ending. There were other things too, but Tony's saying they didn't film them, there are no alternate scenes. His reaction was, oh my god, no no, when speaking to The Hollywood Reporter. He went on to say, the more authority that you hear people talk about online, about what happens on that movie, the less they know. On the subject of rumours of what happened behind the scenes, he said maybe someday they'll be revealed, but he reiterates, there is no so-called director's cut. Directed by Gareth Edwards, the original script was by Chris White, but it underwent five weeks of reshoots after its initial production wrapped in 2016. Gilroy was brought on for rewrites, earning him a co-writer credit and to oversee some scenes as a second unit director. He also helped with the editing, but the film eventually became a box office hit and many Star Wars fans to this day consider it the best film of the Disney Star Wars era. Now we know for a fact there were plenty of unused scenes, many of which have not seen the light of day, but Gilroy's in insisting, none of them are up to scratch, most were not finished in post, some are unedited and he's saying there is no such thing as an alternate director's cut, he states the best version of the film is the one you saw in cinemas, and the legacy of the film lives on in Andor season 1 and again in season 2 when it comes out next year, and in two years time in 2025 when we get the next Star Wars film, it'll be the 10th anniversary of The Force Awakens and the 20th anniversary of Revenge of the Sith, I really hope there's a re-release in cinemas and if so, I hope they include them on Mothma scenes, I've broken those down in the past, the deleted scenes of the delegation of 2000. If they include it, it would have aged well with Mon Mothma and Andor and Rogue One. The space politics would flow really nicely, but share your thoughts on this and everything we spoke about in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you always.